What's going on everybody? Hope everybody's doing well. So for today's video, we're actually going to talk about how to add percussion to worship contemporary or inspirational music. Yeah, it's about to be nice up in here. Hey everyone, welcome back to A Percussion Life. My name is Eric Perez, and if this is your first time here, please subscribe and hit that notification bell just so you can find out whenever I upload. And if you're back, thank you for being the day one and continue supporting this channel and sharing it and commenting, man. Seriously, thank you to all the day ones that just continue to show that support and love. So this is actually a pretty highly requested video. I've been getting a lot of requests to kind of break down what I would do in a worship or contemporary or inspirational type of setting. And I think I'm gonna have to kind of break this down in parts. What I'm actually going to do is two different videos. One really focusing on like the congas, bongo, and jembe, and then another separate video focusing on minor percussion like shakers, the rain stick, chimes, and how to incorporate that in a worship, contemporary, inspirational type setting. And please stick around to the end of the video where I'm actually going to play these patterns and kind of show these examples in context with some music. So at least you can get an idea of how you would want to incorporate it in your own style of playing or whatever type of music you decide to use this on. And if this is not your setting, I think what I'm going to try to deliver here is a lot of useful information that can actually help you out on other styles of music and give you ideas to try to incorporate it in whatever genre you decide to play and use it for. But before I could break the patterns that I'm going to show you today, I first have to explain some very important things, especially when trying to add percussion in this style of music, worship, contemporary, or inspirational music. First thing you need to understand is that you are not the main event. Yes, you are not the main event, especially when it comes to this style of music, if it's worship, you're, you're serving a higher purpose, then a lot of attention really shouldn't be drawn to you when playing, it should actually be drawn somewhere else, if you know what I mean. When it comes to a musical language, you yourself shouldn't be standing out. You shouldn't be the loudest person. You shouldn't be the person rolling and adding some crazy tumbaos. No, that is not your job in this style of music. Something that's very key and I think uh, helped me early on because I've been playing this style of music for a long time. I've done live recordings and something that, that has always helped me is this advice. You are sprinkles to a cake. So you're really not necessary. Anybody can just add synth to a track and then put that in the background and not hire you. But you are like that special little ingredient that makes the music stand out a little bit more. It gives it more depth. It gives it more complexity because you have live percussion. You have feeling being transmitted on these instruments to add value to a, something that was already established. So when approaching percussion especially with congas and especially with bongos and if you have a djembe or a cajon whatever it may be you 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 don't want to really draw attention to yourself you just want to kind of just add little moments that can kind of uplift the music a little bit more so no your slap doesn't have to cut through through the mic or no nobody should actually even tell you man that percussionist was great N no literally you're just adding a little bit more to something that sounds good already. And I have a bunch of videos when it comes to dynamics and adding depth to your playing. So when it comes to like open tones and slaps and, and little, little notes here and there, again, you have to be aware of what's really going on around you. You shouldn't be louder than a drummer. You shouldn't be louder than the guitarist. You shouldn't even be louder than the synth player that's just playing strings in the background. No, you, you should literally just be doing some little touches and little taps that add some sort of uniqueness to it all. So now that we got that out of the way, let me break down some patterns and suggestions that you can actually apply on congas, bongos, and djembe. So the most common one that I hear when it comes to contemporary music or worship music or inspirational music, when it comes to like conga playing is, I always hear, you know, basic tumba or basic malcha.
and it's played very softly it's not just out there it, it fits it's very common and if they switch it up what they do is rather than doing the opens here they do the opens here And they're probably playing it a lot slower than that, so it adds a little bit more of a feeling. So what I want to suggest, kind of going away from that, especially on the congas, is something like this. It's very mellow, very different, kind of, you know, pleasing and chill, and yeah, that's kind of the point. It's not really meant to, you know, add, I think it, I think it, I think it, I think it. It's really meant to be relaxed, chill, really laid back, not so present. And if you notice, I'm adding dynamics in my open. So let me break this pattern down. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to count it later so you can understand where I'm placing it. But to learn this pattern, the best place that I found to learn it is actually in those first two opens. So what I do is two opens with my dominant hand on the conga. And what I'm doing in this pattern that really adds a little bit more depth is I'm doing a lot of little touches, little ghost notes, fingertip taps, just to add a little bit more of a mellow feel. Again, it's not present, it's not out there, but it allows me to keep the feeling, you know, going on in that style and genre of music. So what I do is right after those two opens, I actually do a ghost note with my non-dominant hand on the conga, a ghost note with my dominant hand on the conga. And that ghost note actually takes me to do an open with my dominant hand on the conga, and then another open with my dominant hand on the conga. But that first open is a lot softer, you know, maybe not as present than the second open. So the second open is where you get that feel. Do, 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 you know, like do, 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 do. You like, you, you get a little bit more of the uplifting part in that dynamic. So do, 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 do. So to kind of show you that, it's gonna sound like this. So to put those two parts together, it's gonna sound like this. I'm not sure if you were able to hear the difference in the open tones on the conga, but the first one should definitely be a little bit softer and the second one just a little bit louder. But again, not loud where you're trying to cut through through the mic. No, no, nothing like that. What I do right after those two opens is, again, uh, it's not a really a ghost note because I'm placing it a specific way, but it's not present. So yeah, you can consider it a ghost note, but it's really not loud. What I'm doing is I'm actually going to do like rest my hand with my non-dominant hand on the conga, a fingertip tap, so a ghost note with my dominant hand on the conga, another fingertip tap with my non-dominant hand on the conga, and then again, a soft, close slap with my dominant hand of the conga. So it should sound like this. So to put that together, Again, very delicate. I think the key word here is playing delicate, playing soft, 
playing controlled, not too loud, but you know, just there. Now to finish off, after doing the close slap, since your non-dominant hand is kind of laid out on the conga, what you're actually gonna do is a fingertip tap or a ghost note with your non-dominant hand on the conga. And then you're going to do a bass with your dominant hand, another bass with your non-dominant hand, and another bass with your dominant hand, and then a fingertip tap which is what's gonna take you to start the whole pattern all over again. So to show you that, it's gonna sound like this. So to put the whole pattern together, it's gonna sound like this. And something about this pattern is that maybe to start all over, you add an extra ghost note or a, a slap or another bass or a muff, or, and that's okay. You can do that as long as, again, it doesn't disrupt that flow and feel. Now, to play it all the way through, it's gonna sound like this. Again, it's pretty creative, it may have some bossa nova feel, but really no, especially when you're gonna play it in the timing and in context with what that style of music is. But to count it slowly for you guys, it's gonna sound like this. And now when you're gonna to try to translate that because some songs may not require gongas, maybe you need something softer, maybe brighter, maybe not as, you know, projecting as much, and bongos are great for that. And something that, especially when you're gonna be a multi-percussionist, you're definitely going to be playing somewhat like this, where you're gonna have bongos on a stand, so you're not going to be playing traditionally. But you can incorporate or translate that on the bongos. Again, something that you're gonna do is, you know, change your, your opens on the macho to maybe fingertips. And, and you're probably just gonna move the bases and, do some fingertip taps on there, but you could definitely incorporate that on the bongos, and it's gonna sound like this.
Simple translating that. Again, this is not a traditional way to play. I'm not playing a traditional pattern, but it really helps again to just add a little bit more value to your playing and to that style of music. Rather than just sticking to the congas, you can maybe for the verses do the bongo part and for the chorus, maybe use the congas. So that's where you can get a little bit more creative. Now, when it comes to the djembe, the djembe has three tones that mostly are used again great djembe players can get crazy juices and tones out of djembe but we're again we're not playing traditional music that incorporates a djembe we're, we're just trying to add again a different sound to worship contemporary inspirational music so again this is not a traditional style this is not even a traditional way to play the djembe so so no hate from the purist but this is something that's great it adds uh, again a different sound to that style of music so you can definitely incorporate that and what you would do is to translate that from the congas to the djembe so for the tumba part you would actually do a bass and for the opens you would do an open on the djembe but for like the slaps and maybe the other bass part you would do more basses so what you have to do there is be a little bit more creative and rather than making the basses you know very present maybe you're a little bit more laid back maybe fingertip taps for that so you're going to translate a lot of this style into just one instrument but it's you know, surely capable. The djembe is very, very versatile, so you can definitely use that. But for example, Again, not traditional at all, but it can really, really help with just adding a different sound to your arsenal and to that style of music. So what I'm actually gonna do to end this video is I'm actually going to play this in context to a song my friend actually did. And uh, I think it fits very well. Um, his name is Juan D. Arias. Please, you know, check out his YouTube channel, subscribe, let him know that I sent you. Practice, you know, with these songs. I think it'll help you understand the feeling and how to kind of like go in and out on you know, these instruments. And you're gonna see how at times I'll stop playing and maybe, you know, just add some touches and then go back to a pattern. So just to kind of give you an idea of how to incorporate these main instruments. And then in another video, I'm gonna show the minor percussion part, you know, still using one of his videos, but you know, I think you're, you're gonna be able to hear it. You know, he's playing. I actually haven't practiced to it, so you're actually gonna see how I'm playing along if I'm playing in that type of environment, how I would incorporate these two patterns. So I'm gonna try to play it very slowly for you guys in there so you could kind of get the feel. So yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and share and like the video. Please comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. And I'm actually going to go ahead and play this song and end the video that way. All right, you guys. Have a great day.